so okay welcome I'm happy to see that many people making this session. I've been competing with something very, very interesting. I don't know what it is, but if something's called phantom.js, it has to be interesting. So thank you for making this here. It here. Um, I'm going to go for a record. Um, I'm going to show the most source code on this conference today. So if you don't want to see source code, then this is just a warning, a friendly warning. Um, basically, what um, triggered me to, to do this entire talk is uh, um, basically just banging my head against the, the problems I'll be talking about. And uh, from there, I sort of backtracked uh, into the, the very, very basics. So even though um, handling of AJAX has e evolved and uh, a web driver has improved and, and everything, it's still a pain to, to do it. And uh, there are different ways to, to go about it. So I've had some problems with the AJAX testing, and I will sh sort of sh show you my conclusions and show you some anti-patterns and sort of show you the APIs that, uh, that I have found. It's not, I'm not a committer or anything, so I might be, be plainly wrong about things, so just raise your hand and, and correct me. That's perfectly okay. Uh, so basically, what, you can, what the problems you can encounter with AJAX are, uh, of, there are three categories to those problems. Uh, a simple thing is you have a, a page and uh, uh, you dispatch an AJAX call and uh, an element changes value. Uh, a typical example of that would be, uh, I don't know, like a password uh, inputting field. Uh, you start typing and it says uh, weak, 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 and then you add some more digits and it says strong. Okay, so that's something ch changing value. Uh, then, we had, uh, then we have elements being added. And by being added, we simply have something that's added to, to the DOM. And a completely new element appears in, in the DOM. And then we, had, uh, we have the thing that actually got me, and that's uh, validation that in not all cases results in any side effects. So things are actually posted to the server, but uh, you don't really know when the call has completed because nothing happens if things go well. So this is sort of what, what, what got me. So uh, I will challenge myself today and actually run some source code. So it's not the first time I presented a conference, but it's the first time I'm fiddling with source code. So I would almost ask for a clap, but I, I won't. So. Uh, everybody starts, let's see if I can discreetly change, switch. Everybody starts, um, hopefully not, ho hopefully I'm preaching for the choir here, but um, where you typically start if you just, just um, have like basically one test, it's the naive approach to, oh my device is ready to use, thank you, uh, the, the naive approach to waiting. And whatever language you, you have, if you have some kind of AJAX call, I will show you this page soon enough. If you have a, an agent's call and you do something that uh, so, so, sort of incurs a delay, then you simply wait, wait for it using wh whatever language uh, waiting mechanism you have. Uh, the page we're waiting for here is uh, actually this is as simple as, as it gets. I will show you the source code. Uh, two buttons. This is the, the case of an, ele um, an element changing value. And the other one is an element appearing. So the source code, I've used the simplest possible way uh, to, to do this, the ancient uh, XML HTTP uh, object, just really to go very basic, not to clutter the example with, with any difficulties. So this is, this is really basically almost copied from an, uh, an example of uh, W3C schools or, or whatever. And that's, that's the purpose of it. So this is as simple as it gets. So I, I have my server, I, ha I make the call and... and uh, on the server side, I'm simulating some kind of load by adding a random delay, which is between half a second and four seconds. So that's all my example. A random delay gets added. Everybody with me so far? Cool, great. So, so this is basically what, what, you would do, what you would do. And of course, um, I run this. This is not really an actual test. Um, it doesn't assert anything. It waits for four seconds and um, it says okay so this text appeared after 1.33 seconds but I need a sleep uh, four seconds sleep to wait for it now 
this is the, the naive way. Um, basically, the first reaction is, of course, this is ugly. You really, really don't want to do this. Uh, but there is a point in me having this example. There, there, will, there, there, there will be a circle closing, and there is a point to, to this example. You don't want to, to have this. Um, yes, great. I can't imagine how you guys back there see anything. Um, so, uh, uh, but the main problem, of course, is that you, you're adding additional weights, and you, you don't really want that. You want your tests to ex execute as fast as possible. I don't know if you noticed this, but I use the HTML unit driver, which is headless, so I'm really going for speed. And that's a completely different topic here, but uh, if, if you have like 1,500 plus tests and you want to go for speed, then going headless is the, is the way to do it with the additional techniques that we have learned so far. So basically, you're losing time if you're doing this. So what people sort of came up with when you, when, when you Google this and you Google examples of this is the homemade sleep. This is the, just a pseudocode for a homemade sleep. Um, so, so what you do is you, you, you set up at a time that you want to wait, and then, then you pull your element. And it doesn't actually have to be an element found here. It can be an element changing value or whatever. But then you, you, you check for that condition, and you sleep a certain amount of time, and then you go again and again and again. And the, the thing about the homemade sleep is that, actually, if you look in the web driver code, this is exactly how the actual web driver wait is implemented. So, uh, of course, there are some bells and whistles. That it, it, it has to check for exceptions and, and stuff like that, but this is the way it's implemented. So, there's nothing wrong with this uh, version, uh, except for the fact that uh, uh, the developer or the, the caller or, or whoever should not do this. We should leave this to, to WebDriver. So, but um, the reason I'm bringing this example up is that it's found frequently enough on blogs on the internet. So if, if somebody asks, so how do I wait for an element, there's still plenty of old posts that, um, that uh, will give you this, uh, <clears throat> that will give you this uh, uh, result. So the homemade sleep, if implemented, will look something like this. Uh, let's see, do I need a man? No, I don't. Um, yeah, excuse me. So this is basically, we, we have a loop going around, and uh, there are different w ways of placing these things, but this is the homemade sleep. So here we actually see that we start saving time. So I print blah, 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 a couple of seconds before failing. So this, this is a random timeout, so depending on, on how, on, on the value, we will sleep a different amount of time. So this is what WebDriver actually does uh, with some bells and whistles. Now, implicit wait, weights, we heard about that one being added quite recently. I'm not tracking WebDriver development that well, so I don't really know how recently it's been added, but um, uh, basically, implicit weights are helping you by going for these guys. We have some very basic <coughs> finders in WebDriver, just find, finding elements. Um, they help us find elements. And these two guys uh, will respect the implicit weight. So normally, if you don't have an implicit weight and you call these methods, they fail. Or the, the first one throws an exception, and the other will return an empty collection. Uh, by adding an implicit weight, we tell them to hold on. So if we, s we, we set an implicit weight for five, five seconds, then they will actually wait before doing their stuff uh, failing. Uh, what's very attractive about implicit weights is that they make our tests uh, quite uh, easy to read, uh, quite almost beautiful. Uh, so this is a really short test. You see, all we have to do is, is actually set up the implicit weight, and we don't have to care about anything, no sleeping, no throwing exceptions, uh, no nothing. So, so this will wait for an element to appear. So clicking. So, and after 1.66 seconds, we have, the, we have an element. Um, the downside of this, there are two downsides of, the, of, of this. The downsides of this is there, there are situations where this uh, cannot be applied. And the other one is that you may have situations where you actually 
don't want to, so to say, hide the complexity. You don't want to hide the fact that you are running Ajax. You want to, to be aware of that. And this, this sort of hides this complexity, which might be good in, in some cases, depending on, on your site or your profession or whatever. But sometimes you, you just want to raise a flag. Yes? Another advantage of this is when you're testing for an element to disappear, mm -hmm. the test will wait until the complete implicit rate is gone. Yes, so that would be the version, the, 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 the first version of, of the downside. Yeah. Mm. Yes. It's also a hard thing to test. Yes, that's true. Um, so, but if you can get away with them, that's very, very good, right? Am I too quick on the, on the code, on the snippets? No, great. So the preferred way of, of doing things, uh, which has been around for a while, is of course the web driver wait. Now, depending on your language, this API will look, look slightly different, but, but the, uh, the results are the, are, are the same. You're able to configure so, some, something nice w w with, with a certain timeout. You're able to adjust the polling interval, uh, how often it polls. I think it's 200 milliseconds, the default, yes. Uh, you can adjust the error message and, and whatever. Uh, the nifty thing about this is actually uh, the thing here that it, it sorry the thing is accepting here the expected con condition thing which in, in turn uh, inherits from a ah, never mind language details the the nifty thing is that this thing whatever you put um, in here can be quite smart uh, you don't really have to this is like the most trivial case test testing for an element just to appear. This is, this is like the basic six stuff. But you can get clever and you can start counting elements. You can wait for elements to disappear. Uh, you can get c quite creative with this. So that's, that's actually the power of this. It's not, not really this thing here that you can specify a timeout or, or whatever. It's, it's only the loop. But it's the predicate that you enter here which gives this thing the power. Uh, so um, now this test looks slightly more verbose. Um, so this this is like the, the real schoolbook example of of this uh, test, uh, and it runs again, and uh, it has its two hundred millisecond default uh, sleep time, uh, and it succeeds. And if if we want to get um, creative, this is where we start. I still haven't been really creative about the predicate here, but I've changed it to uh, um, like element is present here. So instead of having these uh, inner classes, okay, this, this is more a Java issue than, than an actual issue with this, with this function, but still um, we have our predicate and we can do whatever we want here. So that's, that's the real thing. And this is basically, whenever you can, this is the, th the, th this is the thing you should be using. So, and this is also, we, we saw the presentation of Jeb yesterday, and this is, it sort of enters at this API level as well. So as long as you, you're not sleeping, that's a good thing. <laughs> oh, got you there. Okay. Um, right. So... Now we go to my personal favorite, my zero side effect uh, validation. So this is, this is really what got me thinking about these, these things. Um, so the scenario is like this. We, are, we want to validate something from the client. So we, we, we send some kind of AJAX call, validate some kind of value. And it ha turns out to be invalid. So this is server-side validation that we have to do for some, some reason. And then usually what happens is that uh, we see something changing on the, on, on the page. We see like uh, something becomes red, we get a border, with a, we get an asterisk, uh, whatever. So something changes. And that's really easy to, to wait for, to, 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 to spot, right? But then there is a case of... Um, in this case, it was uh, JSF, I think, that did this to me. Uh, when we do this, we send something vali valid, and nothing happens. There is no observable side effect in the DOM. So this sort of makes things tricky, because we, we have no element to, to look for. We have no changes to, to, 
to examine and whatsoever. And of course, uh, if we are in control of this thing, of course we, we can rewrite, uh, rewrite the page to, to add something. Even a successful validation <laughs> would uh, flip some class or whatever, do, do something. But um, in, in many cases this isn't true. So this is what really got, got me thinking about this this problem. So the way it looks um, when applied in practice, I tried to simulate this on my on my page here. It looks like this. Um, so if I enter something that's offensive, I'm almost embarrassed by the simplicity of these examples, uh, then obviously something changes, right? Um, on the other hand, if I enter the only, whoops, sorry, the only valid value here, so the first time, of course, the DOM will change because this thing will go away, hopefully, after a while, again, a uh, random delay. But the second time I, I press this, which would be the normal case, then I can promise you, you have to take my word for it, that there are no side effects in the DOM whatsoever. It's just, nothing is just happening. Um, so, the way to attack this is to start um, looking at the JavaScript being executed. Um, in this particular case, I'm still using my HTTP object, XML HTTP object, which means that, this is sort of difficult, managing all of this at once. Uh, which means that uh, the way JavaScript works, we can pretty much override and overwrite everything. So what I'm doing here is that I'm intercepting the call to uh, this, the, like the standard posting call and just adding a flag, my own flag, saying that, okay, something is going on. So, uh, so I uh, increase uh, just, just my counter here. It, I'm sorry for the way uh, this reads, but this is uh, in, in Java code. Uh, so I'm, I'm saving my, my old um, uh, functions here, the, the open and the completion functions, and then I just override or overwrite, which you actually do in, in JavaScript, just adding a, a, a simple counter to it, and then I call the old version. So what I can do, uh, what happens is when, when this... Uh, uh, when, when the call completes is that I decrease this, decrease this variable and I can look, uh, I can look at its value to, to determine whether a call is made or not. Um, so let's see, screen resolution. Right. So again, sleeping, this will be in very, in, uh, so, sort of non-friendly output. What this uh, output is, uh, it says basically I have a, a loop here and it waits for this random delay again. And in this particular case, um, it took a while for this validation routine to complete. So I'm just pr printing. This is, this, this is the result of this message saying validation error. Uh, so nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing. And after a while, it pick up, picked up this, this error. But while waiting for this call, I'm keeping track of my variable here. So when the call completes, my variable has uh, gone down to zero. Uh, I can imagine cases where if you have multiple calls, uh, this works, of course, for multiple calls as well, but I can imagine cases where uh, having multiple calls running at the same time would somehow mess this up. Uh, it's probably not foolproof, but it's good enough. In the test that we have been running, this has been good enough. Uh, actually, we haven't done it like, like this. We've done a slightly different version of it, and we've done it for the J JSF A4J library. But um, this is sort of the canonical version. This is the Hello World version of, of, of doing this. Um, the non-Hello World version of doing this is when we are looking at um, some third-party libraries where jQuery is a, a typical candidate. So here, um, for jQuery, jQuery, this is exactly the same example I showed uh, towards the beginning of the session. It's just a text uh, appearing, but jQuery is friendly enough 
to, to provide this kind of status variable for us. So in the jQuery test, um, I can pull a variable. I can pull this variable to get the same effect. Um, the good thing about this is that uh, the bigger frameworks, Prototype and Dojo and everything, all, all of them have such variables. So it's really good. It, it's good just look, look, up, look this up in the API and, and use this. Because uh, as far as I'm concerned, this, this has been the only way of, of actually dealing with for me, it was this, this validation problem, but there are other problems like elements disappearing, and I'm sure, quite sure that you can think of many other scenarios where you can't simply look at the DOM. Yes, please. So this detects whether there is ongoing Ajax request? Yes. Is, is there also a web guide and call where you can just ask the browser, are you having any JavaScript at all in the moment? Are you active in that sense? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but I'm sure that uh, somebody else in the crowd can answer that. I guess that's no. Okay, let's. I would be happy uh, to if somebody said yes. The call is, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, I've spent quite a lot, a lot of time googling and searching for this. So, uh, no, but that, yeah. This is the approach I use too. Yeah. Mm. Okay, that's great. Oh, great. Basically, there are some Ajax callback methods mm -hmm. uh, which were implemented within, the, within our application. Mm -hmm. Where an Ajax would set a Boolean variable, whether it's computer or not. Mm -hmm. So we could, see in a similar fashion, we could embed JavaScript to basically find out the variable set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah the <coughs> if I get, get you correctly, um, you you were you set this up in the JavaScript, uh, not 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 in the test code itself, but in the raw code, and that's um, that's sort of adding like adding a hook, and uh, that's nice if if you can do that. So so to say, if you own the code, then this is definitely another way of doing this. This is sort of the intrusive way, but by by really patching into everything, it's sort of like surrendering and saying, okay, we're not owning the code, so we are adding this. So uh, that is definitely another way to, to do it. Um, so basically, I'm not going to keep you here for uh, the entire half an hour. Basically, my conclusions here are that never sleep. There was actually one person tilting his head like after 20 minutes of my talk, but that's okay. Never sleep. He didn't fall asleep. Uh, try the homemade sleep once just to see how it works. Um, if you can get, if 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 you have an architecture that uh, or you have an application that allows for the implicit weights, go for them. But be aware of the fact that they are sort of uh, hiding things that may lead to flakiness. Uh, web driver weight, no brainer. Use it when you can, and if you can't then go for the JavaScript and either build your hook in, as you said, if, if you can do that, uh, or do some, th some in injection. And that, that's pretty much it. More questions? Um, I, yes? I got around uh, checking that an element is not present by setting the implicit weight to zero, then checking the display status of the element, and then setting the implicit weight back after doing that. Wow. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, so thank you. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, that uh, I believe that is m more of a catch all flag uh, actually yes that 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 is a little cheating from from me i 'm not really a jQuery guy um,
I think it's also useful in this uh, this case. Mm -hmm. So in that case, at least we have another trick here. In that case, if we don't really find if this variable isn't good enough, it's not crisp and on, on target enough, then we have to, to resort, uh, resort to actually adding our scripts then. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the way for the same version one can be found easily on the internet, so mm -hmm. I think that one can also be, uh, be used in this case. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes? Mm -hmm. I think you could probably replace the web driver weight so you don't have to actually implement it yourself. So you could say like expected conditions dot you know wait for some some case without wait for text or you know, whatever. And it's still the same code mm -hmm. in the source, but just another way of doing it. I think that's like selenium two that's sixteen or seventeen, I don't remember. Oh seven okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. In that case, I missed that one. Yes, so that's so, so, sort of. I've, I've actually worked mo uh, with most of the stuff on two fourteen, but don't take my word for it. So okay, great. So there is another thing in the API to explore. Thank you. Silence. Okay, guys. Thank you for the attention. <laughs>